Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on Newton's Laws of Motion. The topic of this video is how to solve a two-body problem. We wish to understand how do you use a free body diagram in Newton's second law to analyze and solve a two-body problem. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. This is a two-body problem. A two-body problem is a problem that involves two objects. They're usually somehow connected, perhaps by a rope or simply by touching one another, and a force on one of the objects moves both objects together, usually with an acceleration. A typical two-body problem like this one will usually ask for two things. What's the acceleration of the objects, and what's the force acting between the objects? The solution to such a problem usually involves two separate analyses. In the first analysis, the system analysis, we treat the two objects as if they were one, and we look and investigate investigate the forces that act from outside of the system upon the system of two objects to accelerate it. We usually use such an analysis to determine the acceleration of the objects. The second analysis is called the individual object analysis. That's when we isolate either one of the two objects. We look at the forces that act upon that individual object and we do an F net equal MA analysis in order to determine an internal force. That is a force acting between the objects. Now I'm ready to use that two-step approach in order to solve this problem. A two kilogram and a three kilogram object are connected by a rope. That's rope two in the diagram. A 45 Newton tension force is applied to the three kilogram object in order to accelerate both objects across a rough surface that has a mu value or coefficient of friction of 0 0.20. I want to determine the acceleration of the objects and the force that exists, the force of tension in rope two. That's the rope connecting the objects. So I begin with a system analysis in order to determine the acceleration. And in such an analysis, I pretend that these two objects are simply one object. And I can kind of reconfigure my thinking of thinking of this collection of two objects as being one. And when I do and kind of redraw the object as shown, that rope two becomes an internal object. It becomes part of the system. So I don't consider the force of rope two when I do my analysis of the system. Now I also know that when I treat this as a system, the mass of the system is 2 kilograms plus 3 kilograms or 5 kilograms. I proceed by drawing a free body diagram. There's a down force of gravity and then the support force from the surface, the normal force. There's a 45 Newton force from rope 1. That comes from outside the system, not from inside the system like the rope 2 force. And then finally there's some friction from this 5 kilograms rubbing across the surface. Now I can begin by calculating F grab. I go 5 kilograms, the mass of the system, multiplied by 9.8 newtons per kilogram to get 49 newtons. And now I can use that F grab to calculate that F friction. Now since the, there's no vertical acceleration, the normal force equal the gravity force. So the normal force is 49 newtons and I can go 0.2 times 49 newtons using the formula that we usually use for friction, mu times F norm. Now I find the friction force is 9.8 newtons to the left. I'm ready to conduct an F net equal MA analysis. For F net, the vector sum of all the forces, I say that's going to be equal to the forward force minus the backwards force. That's going to be equal to the 40, to the 45, 45 newtons of tension minus the 9.8 newtons of friction. That comes out to be 35.2 newtons. Now I can calculate acceleration. It's F net divided by M, or 35.2 newtons divided by 5 kilograms, the total mass of the system. That gives me 7.04 meters per second per second. Now that I've done my system analysis to determine acceleration, I'm going to do the individual object analysis to determine the force in rope 2. It doesn't matter which object I pick to analyze, so I'm going to pick object 2. In a moment, I'll pick object 1 and repeat the analysis. So picking object 2, I know that the mass is 2 kilograms, and I know that the forces are gravity down, normal force up, and then the tension force in rope 2 pulling it to the right. Now note that this is not the 45.0 newtons. This is a different force. 45 newtons was the force in rope 1, and that was applied to object 1. I'm analyzing object 2, the 2 kilogram mass. Finally, there's the friction force to the left on 2 kilograms of mass. Now I repeat the analysis I did previously for the system analysis. I'm going to calculate the gravity force. It's 2 kilograms, though, 
times 9.8 newtons per kilogram. That's 19.6. Then I'm going to calculate the friction, but it's the friction on the 2 kilogram object that experiences this normal force of 19.6 newtons. So 0.2 times 19.6 newtons gives me the friction force on this 2 kilograms. Then finally, I know the acceleration of this object. I'm ready to do the F net equal MA analysis. I happen to know M, and I happen to know A for this 2 kilogram mass. So I'm going to go 2 times 7.04. That gives me 14.08 newtons as the net force on object 2. Now that net force is the result of a forward force minus a backwards force. So I say F net equal the tension at rope 2 minus the friction force. And I happen to know the net force of 14.08 and the friction force of 3.92. So I substitute that in. Now I want to solve for the tension in rope 2. The way you'd solve is you'd add 3.92 newtons to both sides and you'd get 18 newtons for the force in rope 2. So now let's ask the question, what would happen if I picked mass 1 as the mass that I did my individual object analysis for? Would I still get 18 newtons? Well, let's find out. So here is mass 1 with its two ropes connected, and there's a gravity force down on this 3 kilogram object. There's a normal force up, and those balance each other. Now let's look at the horizontal forces. There's the forward force from tension in the rope 1, the 45 newtons that was given to me. But there's a second rope attached to this object 1, and it's the rope 2, and it pulls backwards on this object 1, and there's friction force backwards. So there's three horizontal forces now. Now I'm going to do the analysis just like I've done before. I'm going to calculate F grab on 3 kilograms. It's 29.4 newtons. I'm going to calculate the friction on this 3 kilograms. So I go mu times 29.4 newtons. And then I'm going to say the acceleration of this object is still 7.04 meters per second per second. And I can calculate F net. I'm going to go M of 3 kilograms times 7.04 meters per second squared. And I get 21.12 newtons to the right. Now watch this. F net equal the forward force minus the two backwards forces. And now I'm going to substitute some numbers in. 21.12 for, for, for the net force, 45 for the forward force, and then 5.88 for the friction force. My unknown is the force in rope 2. Now to solve this for the force in rope 2, I have to add F tension to both sides of this equation. And then I have to subtract the 21.12 from both sides of the equation. My equation would look like this. Then I pull out my calculator and I add all that up and wouldn't you know, you get 18 newtons. So the point here is it doesn't matter which object you do your individual object analysis for. I personally like to pick the one that has the least number of ropes attached to it because it makes it a little simpler. Now let's try a second example, this one involving vertical motion. A 5 kilogram and a 10 kilogram object are connected by a rope. A second rope is used to exert 225 newtons of upward force on the 10 kilogram object, determine the acceleration, and determine the tension in rope 2, the lower rope. I'm going to begin with the system analysis to determine the acceleration. In the system analysis, I pretend that these two objects are simply one object of 15 kilograms. And I diagram the forces acting upon this object. I don't have to worry about rope 2 now because it's now inside of the system. And what I do is I diagram the down force, that's the force of gravity, and then there's the up force from rope 1. That's mentioned to be 225 newtons. Now I can calculate the force of gravity as 15 kilograms times 9.8. That comes out to be 147 newtons. Then I can say the net force is the upward force minus the downward force. That is to say, it's the 225 newtons minus the 147 newtons. That comes out to be 78 newtons. Now I can calculate the acceleration. To do that, I have to say A equal F net over M. 78 newtons divided by 15 kilograms. That comes out to be 5.2 meters per second per second. Now that I know the acceleration, I'm going to use an individual object analysis to calculate the tension in rope 2. So I'm going to pick object 2 as my object to analyze since there's only one rope attached to it. And then I'm going to draw the free body diagram on this 5 kilogram mass. There's gravity down and then there's the tension in rope 2 pulling upwards up on this lower object, this 5 kilogram object. Now I know the F grav on 5 kilograms is 49 newtons and since I know the acceleration is 5.2 meters per second per second, I just calculated that. I can calculate the F net. It's M times A. 5 times 5.2 comes out to be 26 newtons. Now watch this. F net is 26 newtons up, and that's equal to the tension force up minus the gravity force down. You always put it this way. 
F net is the force in the direction of the acceleration minus the ones that go against it. So I happen to know that the F net here is 26 newtons. I substitute it in, and the gravity force is 49 newtons. And I want to solve for F tension in rope 2. So I add 49 newtons to both sides, and I get 75 newtons for the force of tension in rope 2. It's at this time in every video I like to give you an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out with an action plan, could I ask you to help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Here's your action plan. These two resources can be found on our website, and I've left links to each of them in the description section below. I want to highlight the bottom one in particular. It's a tutorial page that walks through several examples of two-body problems and gives you a chance to practice practice and check the solutions. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H and I thank you for watching.